A few years ago, I blazed a new path branching from the main trail in my forest when I discovered reishi mushrooms growing at the base of a standing dead swamp maple tree. I was so excited by the find that I decided to name it the Rishi Trail. In this part of the world, there are two varieties of reishi mushrooms, and the other variety that grows on hemlocks is far more common and easier to find. This year, for the first time, there are new mushrooms popping up apart from the regrowth from the original spot, and I am most eager to enjoy more reishi mushrooms than usual. Even the original is growing a few specimens all from one spot. When they are still young and not yet lacquered with their characteristic red coat, they can be cooked and eaten. But even when they're tiny, they are quite tough and rubbery, making it a job to harvest them. But it is worth the effort. The central part is already too tough for eating, but it can be used for making a powerful medicinal tea with well-known cancer-fighting properties. If you don't cut too close to the stem, it will grow back this season for another late fall harvest. Here they are after being chopped, ready to be added to lunch. The larger pieces are the tougher part closer to the stem, ready to be dried and ground for tea. These are one of my many favorite mushrooms, the sweet tooth. I picked them from another spot in my forest where they are found every year. One of the many benefits of living in the forest is learning these spots and finding new ones every year. The woodpile is often a great place to see mushrooms, sometimes of great beauty and intricacy. This year, some of the logs have sprouted oyster mushrooms. I've removed those logs and placed them where the conditions are optimal for growing them as long as possible for many meals. The oyster mushrooms begin as miniatures and grow larger and more abundant. If you look closely, you may see even smaller ones sprouting beside the larger one at the bottom. The woodpile will provide a bounty of food as well as heat this winter. This tiny salamander was in the woodpile also, but I had to move her back into the forest so she can burrow under a log to hibernate over the winter. First, I'm giving her a chance to soak up some of my energy. <laughs> 